Yeah, good morning guys. Starting another day working on the STI. Um, just getting into work here. Uh, let's go see what Justin's up to. I think if I remember last time we said uh, this was the day. Today is the day. I am obviously taking up the space that hopefully the engine will occupy by the end of today. So, uh, once again, if things go according to plan, end of this episode, there's going to be an engine sitting in this car instead of me. That's the plan. So, stay tuned for all the shenanigans, and I'm sure we'll update you along the way of whatever we might run into. But, engine in today. That is the goal. Let's get it. One of the most common uh, problem areas we run into on any kind of car, doesn't matter whether it's this Subaru that I'm working on or any vehicle at all, is people that claim they know how to do car audio. Because anybody can shove a wire somewhere and then hook it up to a battery, but this is the level that we're working with here. There's a nice grommet that they give you, but they'll just pop it right through this big old air hole just waiting to blow all over your passenger's feet, wondering where that cold air leak is coming from. Wire just gone anywhere. This is a nice huge wire so that way when it arcs out it can catch your car on fire super fast. Uh, a lot of times we'll actually see it coming out the fender, coming out the door and just getting pinched by the door when you shut the door. We've seen it all. So I'm gonna take a couple of minutes right now while I still have no engine in here and plenty of space to work on it and get this routed properly and out of my way so that way once engine goes in, audio is the last thing on my mind right now but I'm gonna take care of it right now while I still have plenty of space and I'm not cursing myself later or catching a car on fire when that thing arcs out. Automotive fluids that I hate the most. Normally what would come to mind would be something like rear differential or gear oil when it gets burnt because it smells gross, stuff like that. But the fluid that I actually hate the most is power steering fluid. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because when you disconnect power steering, no matter how you have it, it constantly leaks out. You think you got it enough, and it looks like it's defying gravity and flowing uphill and still leaking out. You tie it up, you put a rubber glove around one end of it, it starts coming out the other. It comes out the cap, it comes out everywhere. It's literally pouring out on the floor. Anti-rust prevention on all this stuff, all over my boots, tracking it all over the shop. Bottom line is, I hate power steering fluid. Flight hiccup, uh, when I was dressing the block, I noticed that both of the dowel pins were still in the block. So I'm like, great, that's, uh, that's fine. Buff them all up, clean them all up, get them ready to go. Forgetting that this block is aftermarket, it's an IAG, it did not come out of this car. So of course, knowing my luck, both of the dowel pins are still in the transmission. So with a little bit of heat and a little bit of hammer and a little bit of forceful love, we'll get these out and then stab a tranny in and this thing will be in. Just as a quick little side note, very important for clutch alignment. You can see how the hub is offset on one side with all the springs on the hub. It's relatively flush on the other side. Very important to put the clutch disc in the right way so that way these springs don't get caught up and rub on all the flywheel bolts. Uh, this one's really nice, makes it foolproof. It says transmission side right on it. Although I should say nothing is technically foolproof because I don't know, when you're in a rush doing a million things and like phones ringing, customers are coming in, you're trying to put a clutch in and you just slap a disc in there and don't really pay attention. And then it happens to actually bolt together the wrong way and you wonder why you got disengagement problems and chatter issues. You try all these things and you pull the transmission out just to find out that that's on the wrong side. It can happen to the best of us. Ask me how I know.
All right. So just finishing up the AC swap. Um, unfortunately, one of the problems with having so many parts on the shelf, I just grabbed the AC compressor, didn't even bother to look that the connector was a little tiny little one that goes on the actual harness of the car. And luck would have it, the one that I chose was an older style and didn't have that same connector. But as also luck would have it, I, while I was fixing all the wiring, I found that this pin for the alternator harness was all rusted and corroded. So that was a potential issue that we can fix and clean up and file now and hopefully avoid that one and hopefully we have a, a good alternator and that's not rusted either. But if I gotta swap that out, it is what it is. It's one step closer to getting this thing running. So on track, another problem down and solved. Just finished up the fourth cylinder cooling bypass mod. Uh, you've seen it dangling off the engine. It's a little hose that comes off the back of the cylinder head. What it actually does is it connects to the outlet side of the heater core. Now that's the lower hose in the heater core and that goes to the metal pipe that is the direct feed pipe for the water pump. So now that water pump is getting fresh water directly across the, the um, combustion chamber on cylinder four, fixing the overheat issues and hopefully preventing any kind of premature this failure. This hose goes all the way into the back of the cylinder head, right into a plug, an Allen key plug that's normally there. So it kind of just flows through there. Instead of around it, now it goes across the cylinder. So it's sponsored by Dielectric Grease. Don't forget the Dielectric Grease. Just get my Dielectric Grease. For all your needs to be watertight electrical connections, oxygen sensor, Dielectric Grease. Check. We know you have a lot of options in grease. Choose Dielectric Grease. The following message has not been a paid advertisement by any company. We are not sponsored by anybody, hence why we are broke in making these videos. So just use the grease, doesn't matter which one, anyone will do. So I'm starting to smell a little bit of fuel in the shop. I mean, when the guy next to you is doing anything with fuel in the other bay, you can smell it in a matter of seconds. So what, uh, what's going on over here? Oh, geez, I see a map gas and a heat gun. I, I might have had to get a little extreme. It's uh, these factory fuel lines, because we did the top feed upgrade. Uh, they've been on there for like, I don't know, 15, 16 years. And They've gone through so many heat cycles that they've gone from rubber to plastic. So they didn't really want to come off too well. So I uh, was able to like get the heat gun to soften them up a little bit, get a little bit of lubrication behind there. I was like really close to, this thing was on like max setting and didn't want to get it enough. We didn't have to get crazy. They did finally come off. So just finishing up these uh, fuel lines and then this part of it will be done. All right guys, so it's been a, been a trying day to say the least, but there was a lot of progress that was made. So. The engine is in the car. It is sitting in the car for the first time since we pulled it out months ago. This is amazing. That's right. a big hurdle. Right. We, we, can, we can make the engine turn the wheels. That's true, you know, technically. Right? I mean, we can... Vroom, 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 vroom. Look at that. Moving under its own power. Te technically. So, <laughs> I am officially, I don't have a towel to throw in. I am, I'm throwing it in. This thing is in the car. I'm super happy, I'm excited, I'm exasperated, I'm exhausted, but it's in the car. We're hopefully through most of the hurdles and it's just like hooking some stuff up. So next video, hook it all together, start cranking it, make sure everything works, heat cycle it, start breaking it in the right way. We got some break-in oil, we got some fun other goodies to throw into it and 
This is, this is a, an exciting, good way to end the night. I'm, I'm glad that we made it. We pushed through it a little bit later than we want, but it's in the car. It's sitting in the car. That's all that matters. One less engine on a stand. One less engine I have to trip over. This is, this is amazing. I'm, I'm excited right now. This, this is a good night. So hopefully the next uh, video will be a startup, and then after that, it'll be the uh, first shakedown. So tune in.